Coming up on Talk is Cheap, a Benedictine monk named Father Ernetti built a time machine. We're going to talk about that and find out why Dan has been staring at a mirror for the last two weeks. Talk is Cheap. Another exciting episode of Talk is Cheap. My name is Pete Hobleib, coming at you from deep underground in our secret bunker. And uh, to my immediate right over here, the one and only Dan Holfeld. Talk is cheap. Cheap is talk is talk is cheap. All right. And who's on the end over there? <laughs> bull right by there. Right right there. Uh, Dusty Long. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, I hey, have nothing too much Dusty. to say. Yeah, that's oh, a no, tough one to follow up. I do have something to say. I uh, want do. to give a shout out. To uh, our biggest fan in Scotland, uh, Mario UFO. Oh, yeah. yeah. Thank you very much, Mario, for commenting and, and whatnot. And uh, uh, also want to say hi to Jane, who Mario knows. I think yeah. Pete might know, too. <laughs> <laughs> but we always like to Shout out to Mario and Jane, yeah, two we nice will. folks, big fans. Yeah, and we love interacting with uh, our viewers. You're big so. fans. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. and, and since we're in shout-out mode, oh. uh, I have a shout-out as well. I want to give a shout-out to Anthony at Crooked Creek Canoes for the bomb t-shirt. Oh, nice. Pretty sweet. Life is good, my friend. Does he want to sponsor the show? Uh, he <laughs> wouldn't go that far. Yeah, I don't know. He gave me a t-shirt, so that, that that's that's probably about as good as we'll get. I'll ask him. <laughs> Anthony, if you're watching this, uh, sponsor the show. Sponsor the show. We'll put a little ad up for him. Anywho. You know, we talk a lot on the show about uh, other dimensions, you know, um, space travel, time travel, Mandela effect stuff. Mm -hmm. um, the the topic that I w I'm going to talk a little bit about here is something new to me. Um, I just recently got in it as I was just kind of like scrolling to the corners of the Internet one night and was just kind of wondering, uh, you know, what what's new and unique out there. Um I came across like the kind of the topic of time machines. Mm, okay. Okay. And I, I, we were ob obviously all familiar with the shows like Back to the Future, Doctor Who. Time Machine. Time Machine. <laughs> yes, Austin Powers. Um, I came across a pretty interesting one, uh, and uh, it, it's it's called a chronovisor, a chronovisor. Okay. Mm -hmm. Story goes, this uh, uh, Benedictine monk. Uh, Father Pellegrino Ernetti, Benedictine monk, uh, allegedly, and you know, here's a picture of him here, uh, allegedly, uh, with the help of others, um, in the in the 50s, I believe it was, or 40s or Wait, 50s. Wait, now this is a split view. What's the thing yeah. on the left? That is, we're jumping a little ahead, but oh, okay. the thing on the left, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll say it, is allegedly a picture of Jesus Christ dying on the cross. This was taken with a Polaroid. <laughs> this was taking, taken with the chronovisor. Okay. Which is a machine that does not allow a person to actually travel through time. Okay. Like, you know, the traditional time travel kind of machines that we're, we're kind of familiar with, with sci-fi and things like that. But rather, it was a box that, a television, basically, that you could then, with the use of dials, uh, go back through time and actually then visually witness the events. So... For instance, you wanted to see what you were doing when you were 12 years old on March 12th or whatever. Dusty, you could get this piece of equipment. You could you could dial it in, um, and then you'd be watching a television show of this location of, of the events going on. See, this is exactly at the same Montauk shit. They had that TV thing. Yeah, that could that yeah. could look back as well. So, and that could very well be the Chronovisor version 2.0, you know, or Chronovisor 3000. Well, how the hell are you going to be looking at something? I mean, well, in this, supposedly how it goes is that every event, every action that happens, leaves echoes throughout time and space forever. It never really goes away. Okay, okay. and this machine developed by some of the greatest minds on the planet, you know, potentially off the planet, we're are able to then dial in and adjust it to the frequency of whatever mm. event you want to watch. So uh, Father uh, Ernetti, 
went back and he viewed the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. This is allegedly a photo of that. So I'll give you a little bit more background. Let's see. Here we go. This is just uh, the Father Ernetti's Chronovisor wiki page. It's very short. But uh, Father Mar- Marcello Pellegrino Maria Ernetti stated that he watched Christ dying on the cross. He attended a performance uh, of a previously unknown play by the Roman playwright Quintus Ennius. And... Uh, allegedly wrote down this uh, parts of this play as well and it was translated, but it's of course not without uh, its um, kind of naysayers, the whole thing. Um, what I ha- didn't mention was that Father Ernetti built this for the Vatican. Mm-hmm. So the, the Roman Catholic Church was using this to help further their agenda on the, on the globe. Um, it's allegedly... Uh, Dismantled now because they did not want it to fall into the wrong hands because it could be uh, used as a very sure. I believe uh, that. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, we 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 we, disassembled we have this. It. We have this really powerful tool. We're uh, you know what? Fuck it. We're just going to go ahead and mothball yeah. it. There's a couple books too that were written. Peter Caressa. It's a 1997 book that he wrote about it. And allegedly, this er- Ernetti guy was a. Uh, you know, a physicist and was very s- smart and scientific and also worked with some post-World War II German engineers on this. Um, here's an article, uh, the Museum of Unnatural Mystery. Uh, I came across, I thought it was pretty good because it, it, it talked a little bit more detail about what happened as well as some of the kind of debunking things because uh, let's admit it, the, the proof on this one is pretty, Yeah, it's not just missing, it's like... There is none? Yeah, they, yeah it's, <laughs> it's not even just missing, it's just, uh, yeah, this is... Uh, Interesting. <laughs> Instead of receiving broadcasts from a local transmission station, the chronovisor could tune into the past to allow the viewer viewer to see and hear events that had occurred years or even centuries earlier. Uh, it worked by detecting all the sights and sounds that humanity had made that still floated through space. Okay. We, uh, so to, to so, get out there and reach those, ain't they so far away though? I mean, how do they get back? Uh, beyond my pay grade there, man, <laughs> on how that works and how they capture that. Well, that's just the thing that I'm having an issue with, with like even starting to believe any of this. So if you have a TV and you're like, oh, I want to see what, you know, like you said, I was doing when I was 12. So you dial it in. So I could see the frequency of the day, even like you could kind of like, if, you, if that was possible, I could see the day. But how do you get it to exactly a, a certain point, point in, in time, in time on the earth? You know, on all this. And then how the hell are you well, that's viewing that's what the it? dials are for. Yeah, that's exactly so you're, you're just kind of <laughs> well, you gotta go to, sketching down to, oh, yeah, I want to be right there. Uh, and, millihertz. You got your hertz for the day, and you got your millihertz for the time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah Dan, Dan knows. And then you yeah, got Dan's quad got hertz, it. so you can figure out exactly like what the, purse you're going to look at and whatnot. Sure, right. Right. So yeah, on because so forth. not only is there a time uh, adjustment, but there's actual physical location. Yeah, you have to yeah. do the location. And then how are you viewing it? Because if, if I want to see what you're doing, but then I dial it all in, but... I'm watching a TV, so the the camera, I guess, would be facing this way. I wouldn't see anything. You're yeah, doing, so you to, how do you do it? Yeah. How do you have to get that to... Can you go anywhere and point? Once you get there, can you drive it with a joystick or something, it, like a drone? If they would have told yeah. me it was a VR machine, I'd have an easier time understanding how they could manipulate it to make sure that you what saw what you wanted to see. What if it was just like, like, you, like an iPad with like a map where you can just pinch to zoom? Yeah, like and Google Earth. And then that just Earth dials the then, frequency in where it needs to be, and it's just yeah, intuitive that But way. this was made in the 50s. They still had tubed... But, okay, no, 50s <laughs> times 100, because the 100 years of head oh well oh. technology still yeah right no <laughs> yeah right yeah. that's a good way to think about it the mil- military keeping that kind of this technology. wasn't military though this is vatican well you know same difference t- yeah <laughs> i was gonna say that's that's not we, we don't need to split that hair because i mean yeah they're pretty much the same difference uh i thought was what was interesting with this article as well is that it talks a little bit how we're using crude versions right now how a mirror is a chronovisor because we're actually seeing something a millisecond. You know, yeah. Did you hear about yeah. looking through a mirror and that's actually like a parallel reality? That's fucking crazy no. shit. Yeah. So people are saying, well, so somebody on the other side of that mirror is looking at yeah. me then. Yeah. I want, is it possible to pick out differences in the background? All right, we're getting off. I tried to. Yeah. I tried to trick the fucker up. He kept doing everything I said. <laughs> <laughs> I did. He did. Oh, nice. Uh, <laughs> they, they also say that telescopes are, are a form of chronovisor because we go and we look out, out at the stars and the light we see is hundreds of light years old or yeah. thousands of years yeah. old. Yeah, millions of years yeah, old. Millions yeah, millions of years old. I'm sorry. Yeah. I just had this visualization of Dan in front of the mirror like for an hour. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> 
Ooh, no, I literally gotcha. looked at the mirror and I was like, I went like this to see if there was something else in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> This is the research we do here, folks. Yes. We will stand in front of a mirror for an hour for you. Dan didn't, Dan didn't make it to work for three weeks straight. We found him starving to death in front of his mirror. He trying blinked to... when I didn't blink. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that would freak the heck out of you, wouldn't it? Oh, that'd be... so, so what kind Sorry. of events... Let, let's, let's spin this a Sorry. little bit here. What Sorry. kind of events would you guys go check out if you had one of these things? Numero uno. I would go to the Roswell crash. First oh. one. First thing you'd do. I, that's the one that comes off the yeah. top of my head right away. Roswell. To go back and see exactly what happened well, there? Well, look at the bodies. Yep. Because I want to see. I pretty much know what happened already, but regardless, I want to see it and say, okay, yep, there's the gray bodies. They're there. Yep. And then they're coordinating it off. Mm -hmm. That comes yeah. to mind, man. That, what do you... that, I would go as far back as I could because I, I believe in the, the ancient civilization that was technologically advanced. So I go way back. I want to see if there was another advanced civilization on Earth because of all the artifacts and stuff that we find. Yep. You so, know, yeah. that, that's number two. <laughs> I got one more. Number yeah, two, go for I, it. I would like to try to find that Dulcie base because you should theoretically be able to go in there and see that shit. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. Go Anywhere right you there. want. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What about you? Well, what I do, uh, I like I like Dusty's uh, ancient civilizations, you know, like the city at the bottom of Lake Titicaca. I try oh, to right. dial in, see what that was like. You know, <laughs> Brazil. What's that? High Brazil, Brazil would see, be that's a good there. one. Yep. You know those uh, those um, Nasdaq the Nasdaq lines. Yeah, Nas yeah, yeah. See what go there and see what they're build, using to build them. Pyramid construction, oh, settle sure. that one. Well, I want to see if Machu Picchu and places like that yeah, were, were it was bustling and yeah, or even before that, and see if they just came up upon the site that was already there and then they built on top, on top of, it. of it. Yeah, yep. yeah. There, I mean, really, there's millions of things I would love to do. Oh, you yeah. know, I I would. Uh, it would be just, it would be amazing, you know, just to, you know, go, crazy. go go back and actually, you know, 9-11, see what's going oh, on, yeah. you know, as far as, uh, you know, the secret uh, discussions behind the scenes and stuff mm -hmm. and just try to like, I try to, you know, tr go down to the, solve some of these mysteries, the 1967 <clears throat> Patterson-Gimlin film. I'd love to go that and see, oh, it, yeah. see if it's a guy in a suit, you know. I want to go and see what the Clinton said to Bernie Sanders behind closed doors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The nice, I think we already kind of know what happened. <laughs> yeah, right. Here's some money. <laughs> Here's some money or your wife dies. Yep. <laughs> Shut up and get out. So we, we touched on this earlier. How in the heck did somebody build this, okay? Yeah. Okay, so the secret team of scientists. Um, what Ernetti told Bruin, Bruin was the author that re released that book as a quick reminder. Um, he had been working with Father uh, Gamelli at the Catholic University of Milan trying to filter harmonics out of the George uh, Gregorian that should say Gregorian chants or George Gregor Gior uh, chants when they heard the voice of Gamelli's late father speaking to them on the wire recorder. So Gamelli, uh, uh, they were trying to filter out the harmonics, and then they heard uh, he heard his father talking. Hmm. And then uh, they or Nettie approached some eminent, eminent scientists and assembled a team. Uh, the group in included there's some spelling errors here Enrico Fermi, one of the designers of the first atomic bomb, and Werner von Braun. Von Braun, Ooh, yeah. Yeah. which you've heard Nazi of on Braun. Yes, yep. right? He's the one that wants the UFO shit out. Yep. Could tune into any time or place. We mentioned that. Crucifixion of Christ, uh, the French conqueror Napoleon, the Roman philosopher Cicero, and then that play we talked about, uh, Thyestes by Quintus Ennius. Why do they have such a poor picture then? The, the picture of Jesus, they said, the yep. alleged. Why is it such poor quality? Because color didn't come until the second version. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they couldn't release a cover, color photo of it because they didn't have color yet, so it had to stay in black and white, right? But it's still just, it's a horrible picture. You got to figure, if I take a picture of a TV screen, I'm actually going to see some detail. That was just a black and white. I mean, how... What if the, what I, they might have... The, the viewer he had was probably just black and white. Even, I mean, even so, you'd think, you know, I watch black and white movies and they don't look like When did a you blob. say this was? 1950s? Yeah. When uh, did color come out? 19... It would have been... Yeah, the 50s would have been black color, and white. Mm, yeah. But even so, it was just like his face... Hey, look, at it, it's just like slammed up on there. He might be crucified right there. Well, That's allegedly what it is, but we're going to... Talk a little bit about the debunking here. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> As well, coming up. Right, but I'm anyway, sorry. I digress. So we talk about the proof. He he, he provided some, uh, you know, an excerpt from this play that was previously undiscovered by a playwright uh, that was born in 239 B.C. Um, and then the second piece of evidence was this photo that was supposedly photographed through the chronovisor. It shows the face of a bearded man with upturned eyes. 
Uh, and check this out. It wasn't long before someone noticed the picture was identical, except being reversed left to right to one sold at the Sanctuary of Merciful Love in in Italy. And it's a wooden carving. Then you talk about the transcript a little bit. That's a wooden carving? It's allegedly... <laughs> That's the same photo of a wooden carving. Well, he claimed that, well, the person that did the carving had uh, did the carving based upon a description provided from this uh, nun that had a vision. And this is, I had this vision of Christ on the cross and, oh, this is what it looks like. And so he did this. And so that's why they say it looks the same is because this vision was described Uh, so accurately that it should look the same. There's no way that that's a carving. Sure doesn't look like it, does it? No, you're not going to carve a beard like that and... Unless the beards are paint painted on, that's kind of why it looks so fake. No, I would say it. That beard has that the beard looks fake. You'd have a better chance of drawing than carving, painting. So then, um, <laughs> so anyway, uh, then they, they started Damn. analyzing uh, the play that he transcribed, and supposedly he was using words appeared in it and phrasing appeared in it that was pretty modern for its time. Uh-huh. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> We just had a unexpected, yeah, unexpected visitor <laughs> crash the studio here. Oh, you can hear just panting. Why would you come in the room to peek your head and just sit there and breathe? <laughs> no. it's, it's hotter in here than it is out there anyway, the poor dog. Okay. So I guess um, th- that's in a nutshell the cr- chronovisor. Okay. Um, I and he's got no picture of the chronovisor. Of the actual machine yeah. itself. Yeah. Okay. There, there is no, no picture of it. So... Um, Anyway, we've got a Benedictine monk that had, and he would he would travel. He was very open that this machine existed, and it was a real thing. So he went around and talked to people about it and stuff. So of course. what we have is this Benedictine monk claiming it, couple flimsy pieces of evidence there, and of course the machine which has been dismantled or basically probably taken away from him and and is being used for all sorts of other means. Oh yeah, I would say if it was if it was true then they probably would have shut him up from talking to people about it. I mean... Not if he's not being taken seriously. Well, he was serious enough to get on yep. the show. So. There's a European... Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Was, this was big enough for you to bring on the show. Oh, right? yeah. Well, so It's too late. He's long dead anyway now. Was so it a suicide? <laughs> yeah, right. Like everything yeah. else? Yep, yep. So anyway, uh, I wanted to just kind of bring... I thought that was pretty interesting because it was a little different spin on a time machine. Hadn't heard of it. It has... The Bennett, uh, it's got the Vatican involved. Yeah. It's, just, it's a good subject. I just... I mean, if you look into the Vatican, they're allegedly in in charge of a crap ton of technology and ancient knowledge and stuff oh, yeah. like that. So it wouldn't surprise me. Well, why, why do you think so- Pope Francis looked so sad when he was next to Trump? Because he knew he was going to lose all his power. Yeah, right. They're going to bring all that energy, free energy stuff out. Yep, I hope so. That'd be awesome. That would be great. I think it's a great subject. I just I can't buy into any of it, but I'm not I'm not sitting here saying that I'm necessarily either. But I thought it was a pretty interesting topic. It was, uh, yeah. And it's it's an like you said, I really like the idea of you know instead of a time machine where you travel back and forth like the Nazi Bell and all those things. This is just an iPod iPad that you can look back in. That's kind of yeah. cool stuff. Yeah. I, I kind of wish there was a little more meat here. Yeah, me oh, too. It looks like you're trying to find it right now. Well, I'm going to bring this up because I. I came across this in my in my attempt to. Uh, you were going to bring it up. In my attempt to. Uh, oh, this is the John Tater machine, ain't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> See, we never covered him either. No, this was a big one. Yeah. So anyway, it's fu- it's funny because you know we talk about this box thing that does stuff, and then I came across the C two O four, and I wanted to tease that a little bit. Maybe we should talk about that sometime too, because this time machine stuff is not a unique conspiracy theory or, or a unique claim to, to hear because it, it keeps popping up that these different entities have their versions of it. So if, if one exists, why can't five, right? Well, and it's interesting because I read a lot and whatnot, and uh, when it comes to, like, wormholes or, mm-hmm. you know, warp travel, all that type, type of thing, they're always talking about parallel universes. You don't actually jump in your universe. <laughs> Get up here, then say hi. Yeah, come here, bud. Go oh, Dan. We, we have a special guest appearance on Talk <laughs> Is Cheap. Over here. Get up here. <laughs> Over there with Dan. The poor. Pup. So who do we have here, Dano? Oh, 
Oh, she's getting heavy. She's getting old. Yeah, yeah. Hey. <laughs> this <laughs> we, is Sally. This is Sally. Hey, Sally, what do you got to say? <laughs> <laughs> you totally wrecked our show tonight. What do you think of that? Huh? Yeah. Good puppy. Yeah. She means well. That's our guard dog, ferocious. You can yep. see keeping keeping away the folks. The black van show up, and we know. <laughs> yep. I love, right. I love it. That All right. So on, great. on that note, <laughs> folks, do some more research on this. We'd love to hear some of your thoughts in the comments. And uh, you know, I know this isn't any smoking gun here, but it's still pretty cool. Oh, very interesting. Maybe we'll find a patent on the Chronovisor here in the next month or so, and we'll put that, that stuff, on there. Yeah, that stuff's starting to come out. I think. Oh, people said that patent for the TR3B was bullshit, but is it? We all got to make our own I mean, I'm not good at equations either, but... Right. There's wormholes and all that stuff. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. what I was saying. It's always... A, uh, when you're like, time traveling and whatnot, they always talk about it not being in our timeline, but a parallel universe. So we wouldn't be actually be looking back at our own timeline. Yeah, that's Pretty the interesting thing. You stuff. could actually get stuck somewhere else, which would be all right sometimes, but... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. Maybe someplace where... I would just... I just think about the possibilities. Like, you know, if you would have made a different decision in your life, where would you be? I I just uh, was reading something about uh, when you die, you don't actually, you know, like we're all energy and all this other stuff. I was reading on that. <clears throat> and then it said uh, when you die, you like this body is done, but your consciousness and everything go or not your consciousness, but like your spirit or whatever just jumps to the next nearest parallel universe. And there, I mean, you don't even know, but that's how we get deja yeah. vu. Yep, and Mandela effects. And Mandela stuff. effects, yep. yeah. So that's it's so you when you die, there's no heaven, there's no hell. You just go to the next available parallel universe where you're at, and you could be, you know, we high, or you could be old man, you could be rich, you could be nothing, or you could be something, you know, that type of thing. So it was really interesting. Well, do you ever theory. have those experiences where it's like, oh man, I, there's no way I would have got out of that. I don't know how I got out of that situation with alive. Oh, I know. Right? And then that's when you jumped to another parallel reality. Well, I told you about the deja vu really? I had about yeah. my death, didn't I? That was crazy. Did you say something about a truck? Yeah. I was driving up, and there was uh, um, right about to Highway 14 there, and I had deja vu about a red truck coming. But instead of like the deja vu where you see the cat type thing, this was deja vu that I got hit by the truck and died. Because I, I just came up on the hill, and I, I didn't stop. I just pulled out, and he hit me. I had that deja vu, and I looked, and there was that damn red truck. And, I, of course, I stopped because I got all kind You did see the same truck again. <clears throat> yeah, the same truck was driving right by when I had the deja vu of Holy seeing shit. the truck and getting hit in the car. And I died that time. That's the only time I've ever had deja vu where I felt I actually wow. died. That's of course, crazy. I, I waited for that truck to go by and like two other cars, and yeah. then I left. <laughs> That's kind of nuts. So wait, are we still doing the show? Yeah, what's this? What is this? I was, we, is this on the show or not No, on the show? no, this, this was going to oh, be on the show. Oh, this for later? All right, we'll close this out of here. <laughs> yeah, close, this out, close this out of here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed the show tonight. Uh, you know, keep uh, liking, sharing, uh, tweeting, uh, linking in, and... My spacing and all that stuff with us. We really appreciate the comments and that back and forth. Uh, Dan loves to hear from you. You know, I like to read the comments and I'll chime in every now and then too. And it's always oh, yeah. good. Yeah. I love interacting with our viewers. Yeah, Absolutely. they're pretty cool. Yeah, without you, why the fuck would we do this? Right? Yeah, yeah, right. No shit. Yeah. So uh, anyway, yeah. Take care, folks. We'll see you next time on Talk Is Cheap. Have a good one.